Hey everybody, we are back with another celebrity couple at your request. We're going to take a look at the Brett and Judy. Just do a check in, just look over their relationship and love messages for them to see what we can find out. Okay, so I got a lot of heaviness um, as I meditated for them. It was heavy, it was pressure. I felt pressure, and the pressure felt heavy and a little chaos and a little it's a little bickering this thing is explosive i can tell you that this is very high energy connection um there's still a lot of things being fought out fought out still a lot of there's just still a lot of bickering i just feel a lot of bickering i feel a lot of a lot of things are still being fought out um Everything is on the table, if that makes any sense. It feels like there are things on the table um, that they both put on the table, and they are fighting each situation out, each problem, each thought, um, each thing. And if I can see it in the way I just saw it, comments like Instagram or social media comments. It feels like it's social media comments on the table. And they are tackling each comment together, but with each other. What are these comments? It's problems. It's a lot of emotions going on here. It's a lot of feelings. It's a lot of things on the table that they are addressing one by one. Like, what do we do when people say this? And what do we do when people say that? And how should we handle this? And it's a lot. However overall i got success whatever they're planning i know i'm talking about beyond marriage whatever they're planning whatever they're doing whatever the goal is between them two whatever they want i got them having a success they're gonna get it it's gonna happen everything that's being planned it's gonna happen the things on the wall that's written down those things are gonna come to pass but the things on the table, those things are going to cause conflict the entire time. Yeah. This is a bunch of communication between the two of them. Overall, that that goal is going to be a success. Why? Because they holding on to be holding on. I saw two separate scenes of color purple as well when I was meditating for this. I didn't know if I was going to see it or not. But when I was doing the messages of how Brad feel about Judy, I had saw the scene when Suge Avery goes over to Celie and kiss her. When they had that moment in the scene, I had that type of feeling come out. And I had the Brad spiritually in Celie's position and I had Suge Avery as Judy that scene came up when I pulled messages for the Brad and it was strong in the spirit I see I see them like Judy is the auntie and, and, and Brad is the niece it felt like that felt like that you know how you may not have had a relationship with your own mother type villain then it's this aunt or this lady who is not the most perfect lady but she brought life to your life okay let me break it down again you didn't have a relationship with your own mother but the lady who sell drugs on the block always gave you some knowledge and wisdom and, and loved on you enough to make you look up to her that's how it feel like the auntie who gets dressed to go out and party all night and be with the different guys that's how I just want to feel for a moment that auntie but she's still the same auntie that will tell you you better not be having sex with all these people out here. That's the feeling that I got from the brat energy. Like you 
give me more than anybody has ever gave me. You've spoken to my life. You show me me. And that's that Seely and Shug Avery type moment that I've just seen. Like, you show me me. And for that, respect. Love and respect, always. Loyalty to you, always. How was Judy able to do that? I don't even know if Judy is older than a brat. But in the spirit, I have her so much older. Because she played the game already. Because someone did that to her or for her. Somebody help her see her too. Somebody gave her the mirror. I feel like Judy is well lived, if I can say it that way. Know the game, know the street. She just have this, I have this feeling of her being worldly, like been around the world and back. And I know what it's like when you don't see your own reflection because she had that moment and she was able to give Brat that mirror. Okay, that was a struggle. All right. <laughs> okay. Hmm. But it's going to be successful. Because they're going to hold on tight. They're going to hold on tight. And that's the other scene of the color purple. Because Celia and her sister, Nettie, they knew the schemes of Mr. And he talked about it and... He exposed himself to both of them. They knew his game, so they came up with a plan to hold on to this tree and be successful at it so that he wouldn't break them apart. Spiritually, he never did, did he? That's them. Because in one way, they're not going to be broken apart. That's where that success comes in at because they hold on to this tree so tight that they're going to be successful in that right. But we do know that Mr. did separate them physically, right? And I think that's what I'm trying to say when I talk about the things on the wall will be a success, but the things on the table will be a conflict. Because that's where the separation is at. Mr. devised them physically. Mr. in this situation is the things that's on the table and not on the wall. Okay? Alright. I can't comprehend it all either. But let's go. So I pulled the messages for the brat. How does the brat feel about Judy? And instead of all of this love, I don't have all this love here. I don't have all this um, passion and I don't have this um, a lot of water energy here. I don't have it. I have a I have a situation, and it's almost like this is about timing for the bread. How does she feel about Judy? Judy, you were you came at the perfect timing. She doesn't come out and say I love you. She doesn't come out and say I'm romantically involved with you, I'm attracted to you, and my chemistry was, that's not the way it goes here. This is more uh, matter of fact, this is more structured. I don't know why I need to tell y'all that. For some reason, I don't know why I even had to say that, because it doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, I got success, and at the end of the day, I don't know at the end of the day. How about that? I don't know exactly what a love is at. When I say love, love. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning. So with the brat here, and my spirit is shifting a little bit because I'm kind of like, I'm from Chicago too. <laughs> Shit, I'm from Chicago too. That's the only way I can explain this. So I'm kind of shifting like that. So this may be a little bit different than our other messages because I got this 
militant soldier, the plan, lieutenant type situation going on right here. Like this is the plan, this is the play, and this is what happened. 1993. That's how this feels. Like this is what happened that day. So the bride is in a situation of how she feels about Judy Judy. Look, you came at a perfect timing in my life. I didn't know I was going to go backwards. I didn't know I was going to go forward. I didn't know if I was going to go left. I didn't know I was going to go right. You came at a time when I was about to be lost. You came at a time when I was about to choose what kind of life I want to live. I, I, I had to figure out some things and you came in that timing. I have been going through a situation over and over again about making a choice about what type of life I wanted to live. And you came at a time and helped me out of that. You came and brought me water when I was thirsty. I was trying to figure out if I wanted a, a soda, or you know, Chicago a pop. I didn't know if I wanted a pop, or if I wanted some juice. But you came at a time and you gave me something else. You gave me water. You actually killed my thirst. Because the stuff that I was gonna choose from was only gonna, it's only gonna be a Band-Aid. I was choosing between two things that wasn't going to fix it. And I have been doing this over and over again. And, and when you came and the timing that you came, you came and knocked that building down. You completely killed my thirst. Okay? That's what I got. That's her love language at this point. I want to look deeper into that. What were you really choosing? What was this Two of Wands really all about? There was a time. This was a serious moment for her personally. This is where the loyalty comes in at. This is where the aggression at. This is where the passion is at. Like where I was standing, I didn't know nothing. Yeah, Two of Swords come back to repeat itself. Like, man, I was like seriously left and right. Like making some, I was... I need to make some serious decisions. She was in a decision-making situation. Choosing things for her life. Left or right, back or forward. Seriously. Trying to choose between popping juice and I'm thirsty. And that's only going to be temporary. It was only going to put a band-aid on it. I was in a situation of my soul. She was, she was really X-raying herself. Brad is talking about a situation in a time of life when she was de looking deeply into her soul. She was making a soul decision. She was really like trying to figure out her identity. Not so much of her identity. Which identity she wants to let out? Like who you want to be now? She was desiring foundation. She was desiring a home. She was desiring something solid. She was at a time of her life where she needed to make a decision. If she, she was at a time in her life when she was making a life decision, deciding on which part of her she wanted to be. Now, I don't know what that means when I say which part of her she wanted to be. But I got like, Maybe it's the person she created inside and maybe it's the real person. No, it's not. They're both real. She from the south side and she from the west side. And I think that is even true. But she wanted to land in one of these areas. Like, I want to pick one. I want to pick a foundation. I want to pick one and be one. And she had been experiencing this thought she had been looking at this revelation for a long time. She's been wanting to offer this to herself forever. So what? So she can be happy. These two people are her. But she wanted to be one. She wanted to be one. And that one that she chose to be 
it had to fulfill her and kill the thirst of being the other. And that's where Judy comes in and brings her out of that and give her water. Like, girl, get some water. You still gonna be thirsty. And that's where the victory lies at. That's where the victory is at. To Judy come in and take her to the hole. Brad was trying to work out plays in her life and trying to put things into perspective and find the right position and find out which real her does she want to take over the life at this point. And, uh, she was divided a lot and needed to make some decisions and she had been going through this over and over again. Like, who do I offer to inside of myself? Which one do I feed? Juice of pop. Judy come in, say, girl, get some water. And that brings victory. Like, water? Oh, I didn't think about that. Let me drink that. And it killed the thirst of deciding who to be. It brought a victory into her life. What did the water do to juice and pop? It flushes it out. Or it becomes one. That hasn't been decided yet. That hasn't been decided yet. So now I'm seeing a band-aid that's bigger than the first one. Because I just got a feeling that at first I saw the water flushing out the juice in the pot. Uh, kind of like when you flush the toilet and it spin around and it turns back clear. Saw that first. But I also saw the water going into the juice and imagine that in the toilet and it just kind of mixed together what I'm trying to say the toilet ain't been flushed yet it brought a victory it brought a togetherness it brought a comfort when she drunk that water when she received whatever Judy gave her but it also didn't complete it why? because I still got conflict here why is it still conflict? Why is it still conflict? It's just like, it, it felt like a smaller band-aid to a bigger band-aid. And, and it felt like, okay, you killed the thirst. Now you got to flush out all the other ideas. And it's still conflict there. So the water and the juice is mixed. She has not digested yet. It's not a full digestion. For some reason, it's not. Restrict it. Why you can't flush this so that the new water comes up and you just keep going? Something about solving this case is still conflicted on solving this case. The, the full decision. Okay, here we go. You started off with a fork in the road. You got assistance to move in one of those directions. And she definitely moved in one of those directions because it's been twirling around her here forever. But I don't have her walking all the way down the street. What I'm trying to say. I have her choosing a direction, but I don't have her completing the process which doesn't make sense because we never done I don't have her going very far because this conflict keeps arising and the restriction happens you know I saw a movie yesterday because I was bored I think it's called The Guilty it was on Netflix I think it's called The Guilty and the, the, the actor in this movie, he gets migraines from time to time when stuff builds up. I don't want to get a movie. I don't know if you want to watch it or not. But when certain thoughts get 
combined in his head or certain feelings start arising it was an extreme migraine that came over him and, and, and began to hear noise and ringing sounds and that's how this feels to me like I'm walking left, I'm walking left, I'm walking left and then something conflicts me and restricts me from walking left <laughs> what is it? A lack of understanding. Something's going on here. Something's going on. I got this south side and west side walking together in the same direction and then I got them conflicting each other at the same time. Why? There's some type of information is needed to clear this out. Some, it's some issues here. Judy brought the water. Judy allowed things to be mixed or Judy gave the lifeline to mix this together or to flush it. And that decision hasn't been made completely, not 100%. Why? Because something pops up in the spirit or in the mind and causes a conflict in digesting all of the water that Judy has gave. Why you can't digest all of the water you gave? Why? Because some type of conflict arises. And then I mentally get screwed up in the head. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. There's a lack of understanding. You may have to do the brat by herself. There's a lot going on over here. She's trying to stop that from happening. Brings me back to the movie again. One more card. And then I'm going to express myself with the movie and this thought. And then we'll move forward. Uh, temperature went down on that. Hmm. There are some personal things over here that's going on. That is much deeper than probably was on the surface. Okay. I hope this makes sense so far. This is the energies I get for the bride on how she feels about Judy. So I'm kind of way this conflict just keep arising. And it mentally just throws her off. Conflict about what? Some issues there. I don't want to sit on that because it's really getting to me. I don't want to sit on that because it's starting to be a personal message. But um, whatever these conflicts are in her, whenever these confusion and mental imbalances that happens along the way in life with Judy, it takes the love right up out of her. It sucks the love that's in her. It sucks it. It feels like a depression, a depressed moment, sadness. It sucks the love out of her. Discomfort that hits, it makes her feel unloved. It makes her lose her happiness when it's so important for her to progress. It got some sadness here. There's some unhappiness here. And it's all because of the conflict. Just like I talked about the man and, and the guilty. And if you just like cut it on and fast forward to the part that I'm talking about, you would, you would get it. When a lot of emotions rises up in him. And when a lot of mental things is on his plate. It kind of rises up cause this ringing thing to happen in his brain and then he 
hits this migraine. Some type of conflict rises up that she's unsure of or that she has not mentally worked out, which can still be the beginning issue, the initial thought, initial thought. And it causes so much conflict when these things rises up in her that it takes away the love. It weakens the love inside of her and sadness or unhappiness. It takes away the happiness that she had. And what she really needs to do is progress. She needs to beat this case. There's a case. There is a something that's stimulating that she has to break through. Let me look into this right here. Because this page of cups just gets reversed. As soon as those things come up, it's like my head get to thinking about this, this, and that. And I don't understand it. And boom. I feel unloved though I can't give love. Let me be sad. Just let me sit in it. That's the effects of the conflict that's going on. This is emotional issues. This is mental disturbances. Causes her to not feel love. This is important for her to progress and make it past this. Be patient with yourself. Hmm. and get back into unity I think this happens a lot okay so these messages are not going where I wanted them to go <laughs> it's, it's not staying focused on what I want to stay focused on but since I started I was just about to make a decision to stop but I'm going to keep going this is repetitive this is uh, this has been happening for a long time right here I have a sense of a repeated pattern of thoughts, thoughts, thoughts making me feel unloved. Yeah, it's a journey of this emotion. It's a journey of it. And it's important for her to break through this. It's important for her to be patient with us. So it's important. Um, su survival. She know how to survive it because I have her going through it and went through it many times and always get back to unity. What takes her back to unity? What gets her back there? There's some strongholds on her. What takes her back to unity? She just offer herself back. She just get back in line. That's what she do. She knows how to tell herself what to do at some point. Hmm. Well, what does that say about a relationship? Judy has to look and see when she's on or off. But I got her coming back. Yeah. She don't close the doors. When she comes back, and she takes charge in the love as she said was gone that wasn't gone oh this is like getting flowers when you didn't even break up wow that was a journey I understand it I counsel people who have these type of situations as well but and I, I um, myself personally I know this type of roller coaster. But I just got a summary for Brad at the end that kind of says something like this. Something rised up inside of me. A lot of thoughts, a lot of feelings, and conflict, conflict, conflict comes up. And I don't know what to mentally do with it. And I need this release. I need to let it go. And her way of release is to take the love or the heart and shut it off. Don't give it out. Don't take it in. No happiness today. No happiness tomorrow. And then at some point, she is nudged spiritually to make it through. Go through it. Go through it. Go through it. Cut the light back on. Cut the light back on. Be patient with yourself. And then I got to flipping that light on real hard and showing up with flowers. Like, sorry we broke up. I won't, I'll never do that again. 
And I'm sure Judy, like, we never broke up. What is you talking about? You cut, you don't want to cut yourself off. You had an experience that I did not experience. I have her cutting her light back on and, and going in to be caring and to be loving, but yet walking around with the same blockages and chapters and It's abusive. In some ways, if you think about it. There's a stronghold. And sometimes we hurt ourselves like that. And in the process, other people get hurt. We weren't trying to hurt them. Been there, done that. Got a stronghold here. Got bondage here. I mean, we got the brat being powerless when it comes to conquering the wholeness of this. So amazing because, like I say, I'm from Chicago. And a lot of people I know deal with this. We come from so much. We deal with so much. We saw so much. And we are overcomers. And, um, we overcome. Sometimes we kill you. Sometimes we just get rich and get famous and get popular. Get elevated. But we overcome. We always overcome everything. That's what we do. That's who we are. And some of those things we carry with us. And those things sometimes take over us in certain moments. And when it do, we don't know how to process it. So what we try to do is go mute and separate and disconnect and shut down in some kind of way so we don't hurt you in our new life. This is a new life. We overcame, so we're a new life. We ain't trying to hurt nobody. We'd rather hurt ourselves than hurt you. But during that process, we're hurting you. But we overcome us. So when we get as low as we possibly can get, we're coming up blazing. And we're coming up blazing. And we say, sorry, my fault, my bad. We pass our gifts. Sometimes with no explanation. We loving you and we are adoring you and we are given to you because we know what we know we want now. We know we checked out. And we know we ain't fix it either. And that's what I got right there. When it comes to Judy, how she feels about the brat, I'm strong for the both of us. It's just that feeling right there. I got enough strength for the both of us. Girl, go to bed. You'll get over it. She came in with strength. And, and it amazes me still, we still not talking about this love and passion. It could have a lot to do with their makeup of who they are or who they changed into. And what I mean by changing into, life has a way of changing who you are. And she comes in with strength, love, and growth. She comes in with perseverance. She said, I know God. I know we're going to be all right. I know we're going to be strong. I've seen it. I'm connected to spirit. I know. I got no strength for the both of us. She's the minister in this relationship. She ministers. She communicates these things to her. She speaks over her life. Has no plans to walk away. Because she's not going to take a case or a position that she's not going to win. I got Judy as the minister. The lawyer. The teacher. The comforter. The communicator. The, the praying person. 
I got her as the strength, strong will. Where the hell she get all that from? She got a lot on her. Very, very strong. And she's not going to lose at something she tries in. The overall card I got for them is success. Why? Because they're going to hold on tight. I even got her in energy saying that she's not going to walk away. However, my counseling head or hat, that bothers me. Why do you got to tell somebody you're not going to leave them? And this is consistent. That bothers me a little. Why do you got to explain that? Why do you got to keep being assured just to keep the relationship balanced? This is what she do to keep things balanced. This is what she ministers to her to keep things balanced. That's a lot of work. But that's her work. That's who she is. But it makes me uncomfortable that you have to keep saying you wouldn't walk away just to keep things balanced. That's like that pulsating migraine, hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting. And somebody have to come in and say, no one's leaving you. Come back. Everything's going to be okay. You are love. You are love. It's fine. It's to take them out of that conflict. She moves in action with love. To remove the disappointments of, of the brat. If that makes sense. She works to keep her balance. She works to keep her. She works to make sure she feels that she exists. She brings growth. Even to the things that she can't understand. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to stop right here. What do I think? What do I think? It feels like a woman who is the advocate for women in need. Feels like an advocate, a, a madam. It feels like a woman who's taking care of a girl in need. Where did this go? I got this thing being continuous right now. So, much healing has to happen. Much codependency has to leave and ownership and entitlement has to go and it's a lot of stuff that needs to be broken down and chiseled away until each person find their identity so they can get in their proper places of life whatever that may mean and so They can use their gifts in those areas. I got Judy here as an advocate. This is a woman that can go into a, a home or, or, or a shelter and encourage these women to get off their knees. And I mean that spiritually, basically how they need to go. She's a worker. 
She's a worker. Gifted. And I can even see some purpose and some opportunities here. I, I, I see her needing a, a spiritual um, life message because I see some things here that will definitely elevate her on a whole nother level. This like Foxy Brown meets Oprah over here. Amazing strengths and gifts over here. But at the same time, need to stay within her own boundaries. Don't know what that means right now. And then over here with the bride, I got a girl, a diamond in the rough. Like, I see them in the same building, in the same shelter. And, and I see Brad is one of the ones who is, who went from coming in the door needing help to be promoted to be an assistant of the manager of helping the women. And she just got this special thing about her, but she not quite out of the woods yet. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that means. Whatever they working on, you can sit back and watch. Whatever goes is listed on that refrigerator and on that wall, they are coming to pass. But there's some things on this table that's causing bickering, shutdowns, abandonment, spiritual disconnect. It's causing chaos within themselves and a hindrance to the plans. But they ain't slowing down and they definitely not stopping. Okay? All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.